Good morning. Welcome to the Monoximent webinar series. I'd like to thank everyone for their time. We realize you have busy schedules. We appreciate you uh, spending some time with us this morning. My name is Ian Frank. I'm a vice president at Monoximent. Today's presentation will focus on Monoximent's fiberglass reinforced plastic products and our joining procedures. Our presenter today is Jim Wishusen. Jim is the FRP division manager at Benox event. He's pictured in the uh, lower corner there with the blue hard hat on a uh, job site. He's been with the company since 2010, and uh, he is assuming the uh, FRP division manager role um, here presently. We'll have an announcement on that shortly. He served as the senior product manager previously. Uh, Terry Cahill, who was our um, FRP manager, He's going to scale back his time a bit in the office and move into senior product manager role. Um, we also have two great engineers in our FRP division, Brian Phipps and Sam Stelsner. They're with us today. Um, and they're supported by our two outside sales managers. Many of you know uh, Mike Murphy and Daryl Fetter. And of course, Eric Swanson's our overall manager for Monox event. Um, a little bit of housekeeping today. Uh, in the lower left corner of your screen, we're encouraging participants to text questions to us. We'll read back the questions and answer throughout the presentation in an effort to encourage dialogue. The Knox Events FRP products include our underduct and corrosion composite brands. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and turn over the presentation to Jim. Thank you, Ian, and good morning to all. We appreciate your time. Time is a precious commodity that there never seems to be enough of and we appreciate your decision to spend some time with us today. So what we're here to talk about are the various connection techniques available for joining FRP, whether it be underground, above ground, or custom projects. The thing to understand before we get into how you join FRP is how FRP is fabricated and shipped to the job site beforehand, before it is even installed. The FRP project is drawn in the computer as an assembly drawing, which shows you all of the relevant duct sizes and dimensions. And most importantly, it indicates where the field joints are to be. These are an indicator of where the labor is involved in installing this system. After the assembly drawing is approved, this assembly drawing is then broken down into factory assembled subsections. Uh, this is uh, what you're looking at as a component of the assembly drawing we just saw for the Kansas City Zoo. And in this component, uh, you see that there are uh, five factory joints that are joining the 16 inch to the 10 inch to the uh, 90 degree elbow and including the saddle taps. This is all done in the factory and uh, the installer does not have to deal with this. What this does is it maximizes your quality at the same time minimizing your installation time. So going back to the assembly drawing, you now understand that the word field joints is a true indicator of how much installation labor will be required on any given project. It's a great informational tool. So that being said, regardless of the type of FRP, whether it's underground, above ground, custom projects, the most common method is the wet layup joint for field laminating FRP. It results in a watertight seal, and when it's done, it's as strong or stronger than the duct sections that are being joined. The other part of this is that after everything is cured, the duct system becomes monolithic in nature, so there is no uh, individual expansion or contract contraction of individual pieces, so you end up with no problems due to expansion or contraction. If you go to our website at www.fiberglass-duct.com, under the Joining and Connection tab, you'll see links where you can access both written instructions on how to do a wet layup joint, and you'll also find a link towards our video, which we're about to play for you right now. The preferred method for making field joints for both Minox Events underduct and corrosion duct is the ASTM D3982 butt and wrap method. Our intention is to pass along field setup and working procedures 
that will supplement our written instructions supplied with the joint materials. Let's first review the field joint materials provided. There is an envelope containing written field joint instructions and material safety data sheets for resin and catalyst. Please review the MSDS sheets paying particular attention to skin and eye exposure. The instructions will tell you how many layers of glass mat are required for each size joint. You will receive rolls of glass mat, resin, MEK catalyst, a hard roller, and a starter supply of buckets and brushes. You will need to provide acetone for cleaning tools and hands, as well as any additional brushes, buckets, and latex gloves. Store resin and catalyst in an approved job site location, avoiding extreme heat and cold. Glass materials should always be kept dry. Lay out your duct system, making sure to support the joints in order to restrict movement. Grind the duct outer surface approximately four inches on each side of the joint. If necessary, secure joints with temporary metal clips to prevent movement. Cut the glass mat strips in 18 to 24 inch laminating lengths. Also cut six inch long strips for hot patches. Review the written instructions for the number of layers for each size joint. Add one to 2% catalyst to approximately one quart of resin. At 70 degrees, you will have approximately 10 minutes of work time before the mixture begins to gel. Cooler temperatures will require closer to 2% catalyst, while warmer temperatures will require less catalyst. Saturate one strip at a time on a pre-cut piece of cardboard, staggering the strip side to side and end to end until you have the recommended number of layers. Lift the completed weld strip or hot patch and apply to the pre-ground joint area. Using the hard roller, roll out all the air from the wet laminate. After the hot patches have cured, remove the metal clips and finish the joint lamination. Thoroughly inspect all joints after they have been completed, grinding back and patching any air pockets or delaminations. For all above ground applications requiring a gel coat finish, be sure to grind any rough or sharp spots before applying the gel coat. Remember, proper field setup can save hours of installation time. Always be aware of the weather and never work in wet conditions. If temperatures are below 60 degrees, you will have to heat the joint area in order to start the curing process. At the end of the work session, you should always remember to clean your tools, store glass materials in a dry place, store resin and catalyst in an approved storage area, and always dispose of used materials in environmentally correct ways. For more information, please contact us at underduct.com or call us at 309-794-1000. Moving on, you need to understand what Minoxavent supplies when there are wet layup joints on the project. The grooved laminating rollers are supplied one per five gallons of resin needed on a project. Uh, chip brushes, mixing buckets, and mixing sticks are also supplied. What is not supplied is the acetone used for cleaning, uh, personal protection such as eyewear, gloves, etc. cetera. Um, everything else comes from Minoxavent. Now, whether, again, this is underground or above ground or doing uh, modifications, all of the field joint materials that are needed for the project are supplied. Now, the acetone that is user supplied is very important in keeping your tools clean because if you do not keep the uh, tools in acetone, they will harden up and be useless and you'll then have to procure your own tools to uh, continue the project. Now a variation on this would be our bell and spigot connection where you have a female, spig uh, female bell and a male spigot, okay? And basically the male is inserted into this socket type joint and then on the exterior of the bell, a wet layup joint is then uh, performed to complete the seal. 
Now, the, the advantage of this is that you do have the ability, ability to vary the length of your spigot end. In other words, you can push it in as deep or as or shallow as you like and then do the uh, uh, wet layup joint on the exterior. Uh, but essentially, it's the same process as a butt wrap joint. Now, moving on to our double wall product. This is a uh, double wall FRP duct, duct typically used for underground applications where you have an inside duct separated by a layer of uh, factory applied insulation and then has an external wrap of fiberglass. And that insulation is available standard uh, in one inch thickness, which is an R6, and we go up to two inch, which is an R14. Now, when we join uh, double wall duct, uh, the inner alignment has always been a, a problem. What we have designed and now uh, supply as standard is our alignment ring method. And there are, to our knowledge, there is no other FRP duct man manufacturer that provides this inst installation tool as standard. If you take a look at the photo here, you'll see that the foam is routed out at the edge of the duct or, or fitting that are to be joined. And the alignment ring, which is a split ring, fits in nicely into that grooved route, routed out groove. And when the two pieces are pushed together, the alignment ring holds the inner duct, which carries your airflow in perfect alignment, so that you then can do your wet layup joint on the exterior of the outer wall. Now, uh, the second type of a joint that we have now offered is what we call our L3 joint, okay? And this is specifically designed for lead projects where dust control and VOC control are extremely important. The first installation that we developed this for was Northwest University in Chicago. And if you do have a chance to get back to that video, you will see that one of the first steps in doing a wet layup joint is to grind back the exterior of the duct to expose fresh resin for that wet layup process to uh, adhere to. The problem with that on a lead project is that, well, you, you will now lose your lead points for dust control on the job, and the typically the wet layup resin supplied is not low VOC. So what we have developed is this L3 system that is low VOC and uh, produces a joint without doing any grinding whatsoever, and it has been destructively tested to 15 PSI. You end up with, uh, uh, you provide it with a male insert, okay, and on the exterior of the male insert and also on the inside interior of the female duct sections, you have a tape that's factory applied that we call peel ply. When the joint is ready to be made, that peel ply is removed from both the interior of the duct and the exterior of the male insert. The low VOC paste is uh, applied to the exterior of the male insert, and then the joint is assembled. You have approximately 45 minutes of working time, and after that amount of time, the joint sets up, and again, it has been destructively tested to 15 PSI. So you have achieved the proper joint, and you have met your lead requirements and gotten your lead points. We had a couple of just general questions. Uh, one is, who determines the amount of joints that will be performed in the field? Um, is that done by the factory, or wh where is that done? Good question, Ian, and that is, <clears throat> uh, that is originally put out by us. Keep in mind that we want to ship the, these duct systems out in 20-foot lengths, and uh, that will determine where the field joints are. But that being said, in the submittal process during the drawing uh, approval, field joints can be modified to suit uh, project conditions if we need shorter lengths or longer lengths. Okay, thank you. And then we have a couple more. How much time um, do you figure for for joining in the field, or how, how has that worked out for uh, contractors when they're bidding? That's an excellent question. <clears throat> now, dependent on duct size, um, that time will vary, but you basically develop a partnership with two personnel. One person is at the joint, one person is at the workbench, <clears throat> and the, uh, the process is basically a constant feed 
constant rollout. So once the system is set up, in other words, the workbench is set up where all of your joint uh, mats are cut to size and ready to go, you have one person who is constantly wetting out joints on the table, supplying them to the installer, uh, either in the trench or on the scaffold, to roll out. Um, an average duct size of, say, 24-inch uh, should take you no longer than, say, 10, 15 minutes to do at the joint. Okay, uh, you will see on a job that the learning curve is exponential, and once the duct system is ready to be joined, the uh, joint process goes relatively quick. Okay, thank you. And then we'll just go ahead and read our third one here um, that has come in, and this is uh, written at, it says, so when the joints are made up, they become monolithic. Are other underground systems joined so as to become a monolithic joint? Uh, there are other duct materials out there, such as HTPE, that are, are joined uh, mechanically. In other words, they're clamped together. So that being said, you, you, even though they're clamped together, you have separate duct systems. So if one duct section becomes heated or cooled with respect to its adjoining one, the one that is heated or cooled will experience uh, either contraction or expansion independently of the other one. With FRP that is joined using uh, wet layup methods, the entire duct system becomes, like I said, monolithic. So any sort of expansion or contraction is absorbed by the entire system. So you, in, in uh, end result, you have less, of mo less movement in its entirety. Our last uh, type of joint uh, is uh, supplied as flange joints. Now this is commonly used in uh, above ground applications where you have uh, the necessi necessity for removing dampers or disconnecting from equipment um, anywhere where you uh, need to um, occasionally get into the duct system. And <clears throat> these flanges can be on dampers or on uh, uh, flanges to flange connection or flange to fans and they are available either as drilled or undrilled flanges. On the drilled flanges, they are supplied um, as per PS 1569 bolt pattern. Uh, they are also available in 150 pound uh, bolt pattern. <clears throat> and again, these are uh, typically supplied in say wastewater treatment plants and the like. The, uh, whatever the joining method is, whether it be a wet layup joint or an L3 joint or a flange system, we always recommend, especially in underground applications, that the duct system be tested prior to backfilling or put into service. And now there are various, various methods to do this, whether it be positive pressure or negative pressure or smoke test, and that is uh, left up entirely to the installer. Um, but we do recommend that the duct be tested so as not to experience any leaks after it is backfilled. Once again, we appreciate everyone's time and uh, spending that with us today. Once again, we have uh, full information, our catalog and product literature at fiberglass-duct.com. The email and phone numbers are listed in front. And um, if you uh, are so inclined, please feel free to visit us at the Green Build Expo. We, we exhibit there every year. Uh, that will be coming up in October in New Orleans. And once again, this is a monthly webinar series Monoxivent puts on. Our next presentation will be on source capture products, and that will be on the last Friday in next month. So look for an invitation for that, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you.